Greetings, everyone. This is Morning Eggnog. My name is James Hunt. With me, as always, Caleb. Good morning, everybody. So, Caleb, are you are you having a good weekend? It's it's Labor Day weekend. Labor Day weekend. Is it Labor Day? Yeah, it's Labor Day weekend. It, it is Labor That's Day. That's where we're recording this. Yes. Uh, we both took Friday off uh, for different reasons. No. Different reasons? I mean, they're pretty... Well, I guess that isn't... The reasons... My Today is my four-year anniversary. Yes, and... Two days before his anniversary was my ninth anniversary. I didn't realize we both forgot each other's <laughs> anniversaries by each other until I said my anniversary was today. Yeah, and he's like, "All oh, right, huh?" Yeah, because yours is the fifth, yeah. fourth, fourth, fourth. Yours today is, is the fourth. fourth, and mine is the second. I always forget that, which is ridiculous. The, both equally hot months because yeah. it's the same month, but uh, yours was in Kansas when we got married, and that was a billion degrees. I think we've discussed this on the podcast. We probably but have. It was a freaking oven because it was, it was about 115 degrees with like 30 mile an hour wind gusts. You went outside and you literally came back as a roasted turkey. Ugh. The the two things I specifically remember from your wedding was uh, the fr- I hadn't seen you in months, and we weren't like we I don't know. We were buddy buddy, but not really. Yeah, because before we made a couple of uh, Lego, we made a Lego video together. Yeah, that's for what it was. A, uh, a Family Force Five music fan. video. Exactly. Look it up, James Fox Forty Seven uh, Wobble. The the Wobble, but it's not duh. It's, it's just, just wobble. wobble. It it has like fifteen thousand views. Is it really? Yeah. It was actually a good. It was actually pretty solid. It was okay for back then James's animation and then he got sli- then I watched an updated style of walking and then I I changed from there anyways it doesn't matter yeah um the two things I remember is I hadn't seen you for a long time okay and the first thing Caleb said to me is we had I forgot flip-flops and so we went to Walmart and I got those <laughs> dollar flip-flops and I think they didn't have black or something so I got white ones and the first thing he said to me was <laughs> nice flip-flops they were pure white pure white because they're brand new pure white and I was like oh I didn't. I don't even remember what I said, but it was. I don't think it. I mad. I cared, but I thought it was like, ah, you're uh, making was, fun of my flip flops, man. Was, it was. You just like, <laughs> if you ever see a white dude wearing white sandals, you're kind of like, what do we got going on here, buddy? Uh, <laughs> your sorority's over there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was a yeah. So, anyways, so James, what James is. Is today, so congratulations and happy Thanks. anniversary. We're gonna go get donuts at Krispy Kreme. Nice, and then I'm heading off to Putin Bay. Putin Bay. It sounds better with an accent, doesn't it? Does because if you just say it as an English, you know, as an. What American, do you say with a Russian accent? Putin, Putin Bay. Putin Bay. <laughs> that is where our Lord and Savior Vladimir Putin <laughs> resides. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, this it, is his island, it the is Putin his, Bay. It is his American Bay. <laughs> That's the only place B-E-A. he's allowed to be in in America. <laughs> it's Putin Bay. <laughs> Shirtless riding his bear around. <laughs> I would actually, that would be sweet. Look, there he is. <laughs> Whoa, there's, there's Vladimir Putin. I See, I would love to meet everybody in power. Wow, that's real specific, James. I, I know. I would have. I would love to meet Nancy Pelosi. I would love to meet Joe Biden. I would love to. I would have loved to meet Barack Obama. That would have been kind of neat, because you get to you get to meet everybody. I just made my wife breakfast early this morning, and she finally said thank you. Nice. <laughs> I shouldn't say finally. She said thank you. Which, I'm just gonna stop. I'm just. Gonna... Hey, look this hole. I can keep digging. <laughs> For some reason, that one word changes everything. Finally. Finally. finally, yeah. You, finally, is the is like it's a good. It can be. <laughs> oh look, he died. Finally, <laughs> hey, they got married. Finally, <laughs> I know several couples like that. Oh gosh, what else can we use this for? Hey, look, he finally drove over the tracks. Finally, I don't know. That's double. Finally, that was redundantly. You said finally. Oh shush. <laughs> Uh, man, I don't know. Finally drove over the tracks. See, you can do you can use it twice because it it represents. Finally, the- I'm finally over here. Finally, uh, uh, finally. Wait, that's the wrong word. Oh, the actor f- or the comedian Fluffy. Oh, I love one of his comedian parts. He's like, Fluffy. so he says, "There's a word that Mexicans can do." Excuse me, all you know, Mexicans. He says, "There's a. Th- it is not even a word. It's a sound." He goes, "That just ruins everything that you can say." <laughs> He's like, "Oh, Daddy, look, I just married this guy." Ah. I just made the what? I, I just married this dude. Ah, ah. 
that's like the sound they make to like like anything you say is like no longer acceptable or ah. Ah. it's an, it's a noise instead of ah crap i think it's more like a, ah whatever i don't know you'll have to watch it it makes more sense when he does it I, I just make it confusing, and everybody's like, what is he talking about? We're really good storytellers here on Morning Eggnog. Caleb and I are both grade-A storytellers, and we both make each other laugh, or we stare at each other before because we both don't know. <laughs> I've told you so many things on the podcast where you just look at me. Okay. Like last podcast, I said you don't insert a corn cob. Anyways. <laughs> There's just things that don't deserve words. It just deserves a look. <laughs> you, don't deserve it. you don't deserve me saying anything. It's just going to give you... This is going to give you a look. Oh, my gosh. And get weird signals with my hands. Anyways. Where are we at? Is it my turn? All right, here we go. Japanese company flying car takes successful test. Successful test. Flight. I, yeah, I'm just saying successful. It's just one of those words when you say it, you're like, did I just say that wrong? Success. success I know. We Pacific. Stop. <laughs> this is successful. As we've mentioned many times and how we started out the podcast last week is we're really good at reading and spelling. Exactly. August 28th, a Japanese company unveiled its prototype flying car to the public with a four-minute test flight. 2020 is here, everybody. The real 2020 that we were promised. Like back in 1980-something. Whenever, you know, Back to the Future came out. Back to the Future. Again. Whatever that one was. What was that? Back to the Future 2? Did it actually have a different than seven? I don't remember. Did it have a sub name? I don't think so. Anyways, SkyDrive Inc. announced the successful test this of- This is like a terrible, scary company. SkyDrive? SkyDrive Inc. Well, Incorporated. Incorporated. Sky That's even worse. SkyDrive Incorporated announced the successful test flight of its SD-03 flying car model at the Toyota Test Field in Toyota, Japan. The single-seat flying car billed as the world's smallest electric Ooh. vertical takeoff vertical and landing takeoff. model took wow. flight for about four minutes. The vehicle resembles a motorcycle with four attached propellers. So <gasps> basically, it's a drone with a motorcycle in between it. What? A drone. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> it's basically a really big, high-powered drone. Uh, curling, uh, it's currently capable of flying for about 10 minutes, and the company is now aiming to expand the time to 30 minutes. Wow! Still not exactly usable for the everyday... It's still not the Jetsons. No, I know. My favorite part about the Jetsons, in hindsight, because you just kind of accept things as a kid. Yeah, of course. Was the fact that they still use traffic laws in space... <laughs> Well, I mean, it makes sense. You have to follow some kind of rules and guidelines. Yes, but what is up? What? Space has no up. But, hmm. I'm just saying, like, I feel <laughs> like they, it would be different than... Uh, I guess you could go by, like, gravitational pull of somewhere. It depends on where you are, though. That's true. They were... Also... Uh, their house reminds me of a Rainbow Six Siege map. Anyways. <laughs> but anyways, so I want you all to think about this. New drinking game. Every time we mention Rainbow Six Siege, take a shot of coffee. Of coffee. They're starting to come out with flying cars. When are we going to get our jetpacks, Caleb? I'm still on the flying cars, James. I know, but okay. jetpacks with your flying cars, in case your flying car breaks down, you just take a jetpack to work. Also, or to escape you... the vehicle <laughs> and it's crashing. <laughs> oh, my vehicle is crashing. Jetpack time. I am now 400 feet in the, gra the air. I should probably evacuate. Exactly. So They're coming out with the flying cars. It can, it can float for eight minutes. Are they going to allow us to actually drive them? Or are they going to make it so... You can only get in them, program where you're going. Because personally, I think that having a bunch of humans and a bunch of flying vehicles is a terrible, terrible idea. But here's the thing. Would we all have to get our pilot's license? That's the thing. I, what, maybe... Because pilots, planes wreck very rarely. True. And if but we, we all... don't have Bubba the Gump Man... 
driving it either. Or a 16 year old. <laughs> you were 16 year old. <laughs> the age limit. Could you imagine a 747, vehicle. your captain standing there? He's 16 years old. He's like, I just got my pilot's license. Hey, guys. <laughs> I can take. I'm your pilot today. <laughs> Although I think there are laws when you're 16, you're not allowed to haul like X amount of people Which, in your car. Yeah, that, that would make aren't sense. family. You're like, yeah, you can kill your entire family, but if you have anybody else, you can. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so. So yeah. That's the thing. Is are we going to have it so that way hmm. you can actually fly? Or is it just going to be space Ubers? That's kind of what I'm thinking. Yeah, space Ubers would make a lot more safety sense because in a car. You don't have to worry about crashing down. Yeah. You just have to worry you about... You just crash right or left yeah. or up. and or, I mean, you can crash down if a bridge collapses, but yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, most of the time, you're not going to crash down. So crash down. That's such a funny way of saying Crash it. down. <laughs> <laughs> so, so now, <laughs> with the flying car, so the question is, would it be controlled by a... IT or whatever. AI, AI, or would it be? Are we going to get Skynet sooner, and then the cars turn into Transformers, that and then be... we mix a bunch of movies together? I'm all for that. I think it would be entertaining to have a little toaster that would transform into things. It'd be pretty neat. It'd be like my refrigerator is my toaster, <laughs> is my oven, uh, is my microwave. Oh darn! All my stuff spoiled because you changed from the refrigerator to the microwave. Dang it! It's all crushed. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Packaging. Anyways. Is my camera. Is my computer. <laughs> All right. So. Is think, my cell phone. Refrigerator think, to cell phone. I think we've worn that one out. <laughs> so anyways, uh, leave a comment on whether you would drive a flying car. Oh, I would totally drive one. I'm just saying, would they allow us to? Yeah, true. I personally don't think I would allow humans to have multiple flying. Well, if you're a fancy smancy, like you know, scientist, and you're coming up with this stuff, it's like you giving your child a handgun. What? <laughs> if they gave us a flying car, it's like you giving your child a handgun. I guess. In the dangerousness of it. Yeah, I that yeah, I guess that's true because it's a very dangerous... It's like, hey, so you know how this exists in movies and they make it look real easy and they fly around yeah, and stuff? I mean, in Star but Wars, but then there's always the time. Exactly. They do really nice. They fall in nice like, lines. They fall in nice lines, and uh, we could all just be like a ray. We could all just get in the, millenni- the aluminum falcon and know exactly, and know exactly what, what to do and turn it on. We're not salty. Anyways. The aluminum falcon. <laughs> or, if you're British, the aluminum falcon. Ooh. The ultimate falcon. <laughs> <laughs> the oh, millennium in it. the millennium force wait I like that's it. that's a ride i never have gone on the millennium force. let's go let's go this year <laughs> let's do a podcast on the millennium force oh. <laughs> i've never been a real roller coaster guy fine we can ride the bumper cars okay i'm all for that or the really really fast motor go around i like that one <laughs> No, we, it's, it's we, so fast. we can take Zoom mics and just have lav mics and just be like, so Caleb, how are you doing? <laughs> Wee! <laughs> oh, well, he's entertained. <laughs> Speaking of entertained, I don't know. Segway. <clears throat> Emus have been banned for bad behavior, a hotel in Australia's Outback says. <laughs> Is it a family? Mm hmm. <laughs> Two emus, siblings, Kevin and Carol, are now banned from a hotel in a <laughs> tiny town in Australia's vast outback. Raised by an animal, animal rescuer, the birds are usually a friendly and wide-eyed source of entertainment. But then the emus <laughs> learned how to climb the stairs. <laughs> uh, yes. The new skill of climbing the stairs gave the birds access to the pub in, in the hotel in Queensland. Once inside, they unleashed a long leg long legged brand of chaos. They snatched toast and french fries away from customers. One of the birds even went behind the bar. A stern response was required. Sorry, there was a little floating speck and I was chasing it with my fingers. <laughs> I, I thought you were like trying to tell me something. Emus have been banned from this establishment for bad behavior. A sign now says, <laughs> at the stairs leading to the hotel's pub. The message 
asks any human visitors to replace the emu barrier when they enter. <laughs> <clears throat> we put the sign up, but we're not quite sure whether they, they're able to read it or not, the hotel co-owner Gary Gimblet said in an interview with Channel 10 News from First Queensland. So we've had to put a bar access there as well. Okay. So first off, why are they at the hotel? Because the animal rescuers own, own the hotel. Okay, I'm assuming that's what I got from the story. That would make more sense. So they're not necessarily Just banned random. from the hotel. They're banned from the restaurant. They're banned from the bar. Exactly. <laughs> Don't let the emus at the bar. It's a bad thing. Emus. I need to. I didn't look up the difference between emu and ostrich, but I did learn an interesting fact on Facebook, and I don't. I didn't fact check it at all, so it could be unreal. But. Did you know that an ostrich will lead away prey by acting hurt away from its eggs, and then once it's away from its eggs and is at a safe distance, will outrun almost anything, except for a cheetah. But supposedly, ostriches have more endurance. I would say that's pretty cool and true. I I, I don't know if you've ever seen the, the Kevin Hart thing about the no, ostrich. No, I've not. Oh, you need to watch that. So Kevin Hart had an interaction with an ostrich, and uh, he tried to drive away from it. And it. Oh, right. I think I have seen this. Its head is like looking yeah, at his, him through the window. His body's and he's, going this way, and its head's like this. <laughs> he's like, drive faster. They're going 60 miles an hour, and it's still doing it. <laughs> he's like, it wasn't even looking for a wall or another animal. It was just doing it. And he's like, <laughs> he's oh, like, my gosh. He goes, and when I get scared, I cry. <laughs> Like, when what? I get scared, I cry. Why did you have to throw that pin at the ostrich? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the difference between an emu and an ostrich is one in size. Yes. An emu is smaller. Emu is smaller. It's about um, four foot tall, I believe it is. Where an ostrich is like eight. They're ridiculous. Like I, I, They're kind of scary. Well, I guess their head, if their head got real tall. They're very <sighs> tall. They're if you want to learn more about ostriches, look up uh, Z Frank, Z E F R A N K, I think zero one or one. Mm -hmm. He does a great comedic uh, explanation about ostriches. ostriches. Uh, also, or ostrich the um, Ostra. emus' feathers, the way they are designed, the way it covers the body, actually puts like a barrier between its skin and the sun because emus come from really hot locations like Australia and places like that. So when the sun shines on it, it like reflects it or does something to keep the body temperature down. So they, they're they very, very interesting. I guess they're just weird. They are weird. They're weird things. Which is weird because when I was in Montana, there was a family that had them. In Montana? The Stevens. That makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, okay, that makes total sense. Yes, the Stevens had emus, so it was pretty interesting. He was like, well, cool, this is something that's normal. For the Stevens, it, it was normal. They mm -hmm. were a very, I love the Stevens because they were just kind of an odd family. Hi, Scott. Hi, Scott. We love you. You're odd, and you're perfect. I just only the way know you are. Scott, so. Um, I'll, Let me tell you a little, little, Ooh, a little story. A little, a little story vignette. about Scott. Um, there's many stories about Scott. Oh, there's many stories about Scott. Uh, this one was fun because he'd been uh, at school, college. He'd been out and visited for because he wanted to do one particular class. So then he went off, and then he came back for another one because he wanted to do another yeah. one. Um, so he came back for it, and so we already knew Scott Scott Stevenson. And, uh, and so the, my two classmates were sitting out on the couch, and Scott had bought himself a, a pair of shorts. Oh, a they pair were, of shorts. They nice, were purple. Nice. Okay. And they had letters on them that said booty. <laughs> so so he came out to show. Were they booty shorts? <laughs> yes. Yes, they were. Because <laughs> they were across his booty. So he comes out to show the guys sounds like Scott. his yep. new shorts. It just happened to be that the professor was standing oh, yes. right there. And he comes trotting out like, hey, guys, check out my new shorts. Sews off his shorts, and then he sees the professor, and he walks back in. <laughs> Scott, we love you. It was not the same without you. It was no, much more entertaining. It was. With you. Uh, I got to have the pleasure of being a camp counselor with Scott oh. for his semester, and that was exciting. Um, <laughs> that was exciting. Not because of Scott, but because we had two kids who probably came from a relatively abusive home and reacted badly. 
um, just in general to things. We had to send them home before the week was over because oh. I think they beat up another kid. Oh, lovely. Basically, we didn't win anything cool. Ah, uh, yeah. Our, our tent, our cabin oh. didn't win anything. It was sad. Yeah. It was sad. So that was pretty. Scott Stevenson made things very interesting. I need to stop saying. You nope, just, you say his full name, Scott Stevenson. It's, it's, just, it's just his name. That's what it is. It's Scott Stevenson. It's just his name. So I hope you're out in Montana enjoying your coffee, bro. And your Calvinism. And your Calvinism. Who doesn't enjoy some good Calvinism? <laughs> he invited me to a group called Coffee and Calvinism. Oh. It's all above my head <laughs> in all the directions. They're like, so, you want an espresso maker? I'm like, no, I, I'm happy with my Mr. Coffee Maker. <laughs> it brews my coffee when I set it, too. <laughs> I didn't have to make coffee this morning. I set it last night for 6 a.m., and I had coffee at 6 a.m. Yeah, they would call us co- coffee heathens. Yeah, we don't want to talk about what coffee we used. Ah, uh, Anyways... <laughs> Continuing on. Continuing on. Caleb with the last story of the podcast. Big cats. You only had one? Yeah. Oh, and okay. we're 26 minutes in. Oh, pff, who cares? Let's keep rolling. <laughs> <coughs> I choked him on saliva. <laughs> big cats. I probably should continue Meow. to. I, big cats droppings. It's just not very well worded. Big cat droppings help German circus weather coronavirus Crisis. Real quick, for the people who spell things out there, they spelled cats C A T S apostrophe. Yes, I imagine it's because it's this is an English site. Yeah, it makes and sense. And so they do. I things. don't know. It just weirded me out. I don't, you don't need the apostrophe, as far as I'm aware. I but think whatever. they do things differently there, or maybe whoever wrote this just technically can't. we do things differently because we're new. I guess that's they do. I, that's why I said they do. Things we do things right, like color. <laughs> you don't yeah, need. We e. drive right. Anyways, Caleb, big cats droppings help German during the coronavirus. Berlin. Berlin, 1945. One creature's droppings can be another's treasure. As German Gross. As Germany's Kron Circus. Krones? Krone Circus. K-R-O-N-E. Krone. <laughs> circus is finding out during the new coronavirus pandemic. That would be my mouthful. Krone Coronas. Whatever. Home <laughs> home to 26 lions and tigers. Take that, the Baskets, or whatever her face is. No, uh, Carol Baskin's bad. Um, I don't know. Yeah, Lion but King Tiger face. King. Tiger King man. Tiger King man. <laughs> Tiger King man. With all of your husbands. Where was I Your going? polyamorous relationships. Boom, 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 boom. The circus has found an unusual side okay. income and raised money despite coronavirus-related restrictions, selling jars of big cat droppings. Well, the, it, I could not imagine how many, <laughs> how many fairs and how many things went out of business because they couldn't do one this year because their budgets are so razor thin. But I want to I continue reading because I want to know how they came up with this idea. Customers have told lion tamer Martin Lacey they swear by the stuff. I am told it keeps the cat away. I am told it keeps cats away from the garden, and since huh. then we have learned that it also keeps the animals away from the car. I mean, yeah, where they eat all the electrical cables. Lacey said, "What? <laughs> what? What animals do you what have? Kind of animals?" <laughs> Let's do it again. That's what Caleb looks like on meth. <laughs> Let's not do that again. They must have got some real thrill seekers in Germany. <laughs> 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 oh, where were we? The circus pop-up shop is also a way to give people a few laughs, says Lacey, as the circus waits to be allowed to perform again. The jars sell for five euros each. I have no idea what that would be we need to buy one. That's only like $10 or Ooh, something. I wonder if they ship. I want to be shipped a big jar of cat poo. What is this called? The crone? Continue uh, reading. Uh, but bum, bum, bum. With some of the money going towards a charity to improve the living conditions of the captive animals. And if you don't have a garden pest <laughs> problem, but find your neighbor's pest... <laughs> 
put some in the garden and the neighbors will go away. Lacey chuckles. Because it's it's natural instinct. They're like, oh, there a lion lives here. Lions are big and scary. Oh, uh, yeah. I just watched a video of a lion walking in between cars. And I'm going. They're huge. They're a lot bigger than you think. It was a male lion, and he was massive. Normally, you only see lions like next to elephants or something, and you're like, "Oh, lions are cute little things." Nope, they're huge. Yeah, everything in the in the savanna is ginormous. Well, it doesn't get cold. I guess that's true. But then you die real fast, too, because it's too hot. But I don't know. That doesn't make any sense. It's like sense. spiders. Spiders in Australia are terrifying because it doesn't get cold. Spider wear spiders. Spider wears. Spider wears, spider wears, Get spiders your wear and pants. Things are there. Anyways, what? I don't know. <laughs> that was good. I like that. That might be a t-shirt. <laughs> We're starting spider wears. Spider wears. Get it's your like, panties and things you wear. It's like the supreme for people who like spiders. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Anyway, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, move over, move over, Supreme. We got a new. We have a spider brick. <laughs> I feel like you know things being called Spider Verse has been you know done before. Probably. You know by by Stan Lee. Oh, Stan. It's my spider phone, spider truck, spider plane. I wonder. The spider plane never made sense to me. <laughs> spider plane. It's like he doesn't need a plane. Yeah, he does. Oh, really? What if he's got to go overseas? Yeah, Are you gonna have a spider just... boat? <laughs> yeah. She floats on what you know, like. Oh, those are terrifying spiders! Oh, spiders are so scary. Jumping spiders and spiders that can cross water freak me out. Just gonna say, I don't like spiders in general. I I don't think I have arachnophobia, but I I might. Um, I think I'm getting better now that I am in more crawl spaces. It's centipedes. Nope. 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 The you know the little fast ones with lots of legs. (sighs) Those I don't think those are centipedes. They're called something. They're called uh, 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 something spiders. Yeah, they're Hellspawn terrifying. is what Hellspawn. they're called. <laughs> Welcome. To, this is Hellspawn. Because I was down, I was in a basement yesterday, and I was working on something, and I saw something move. I'm like, oh, it's a spider, and it was like it was one of those centipedes, and I literally went, <laughs> like I actually jumped. Because <laughs> uh, like if it was a spider, I'd been like, oh, it's a spider. But I saw one, like, yeah, I hate those things. Uh, yesterday I had to be in a pit, and a spider went. <laughs> mm-hmm. I was like, uh, I don't want to be here anymore. I want to <laughs> go. Can I leave now, please? <laughs> I don't want to be here anymore. Nah. So, yeah, in our business, you get used to creepy crawlies, but at the same time, you don't get used to creepy crawlies. Pretty much. It's not fear factor. No. I'm glad we don't have to do anything. Like, could you imagine being a, like an HVAC guy somewhere where there's like, scorpions and other things? Kudos to you guys for Good plumbers job. and HVAC guys who live in places where things can kill you. They're so poisonous. Oh, so scary. Mm-mm. I don't like it. Well, nope. I mean, we can get bit by a brown recluse. Yeah, but so can they because there's more of them yeah. there. There's more of them. There are more of them there. Like in Kansas, they were everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, I I'm had getting, one on my chest. I'm getting all weirded up. Yeah, I woke up one morning and I felt something on my chest and I looked down and it was a brown recluse. I flicked it on my wife. She's dead now. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually been bitten by one. Oh, did you go to the doctor? I did go to the doctor, um, but before I went to the doctor, I actually you peed on it. No, I. Put, oh wait, that's jellyfish. It was. I put lemon juice and something else on it. Lemon juice and it was a tea bag of some kind. I'll have to ask my mom again. She's like, put that on it, tape it on, um, soak the tea bag, and put it on. Um, so I did that for a couple days and it just wasn't going away because I wasn't sure what it was. You're just like, I got bit by something. I got bit by something. It looks bad. So I did that. And then after a couple days, I'm like, let's go to the doctor just to make sure. So I go to the doctor and he goes, oh yeah, that's definitely a brown recluse bite. A black widow. You're dead. Not necessarily. uh, They're not that killer. I know. But anyways, he goes, he goes, it looks like a brown recluse bite, but he says, it should be a lot more advanced than it is. And he's like, so whatever you did worked, worked like it was helping. Um, he So basically what they do is they give you Benadryl. OK, um, because what's happening is you are getting an allergic reaction to the bite is what's happening. Interesting. As I recall. Now, I could be off, but that's what I recall when I got the bite is it's aler- an allergic reaction to the bite. So your skin is naturally allergic to it. And so it, that's why it does what it does. I just realized reaction. that 
I should I have shut the window. Well, Anyways, it just literally popped. That I guess I didn't know what it did. I just knew a lady in our church. You should probably got, shut that because it's probably going to look really weird. It's going to be fine. We're close to the end, anyways. Okay, okay. It's going to get. I knew a lady at our church who got bit in the leg and almost lost her leg because they didn't go for a while because she didn't know what it was. Yep. That's scary. Yep. Yeah, it's animal bites, especially spiders and like poisonous and snakes. Bites are kind of freaky. Snakes. I don't like snakes. I guess if you live with them, you just get used to it. But us northern people who really don't have a lot of poisonous things around us. I don't like hamsters biting me either. Okay. <laughs> anyway. I don't like anything biting me, I guess. If we're gonna go if we're just gonna throw that out there. Well, no, I've had hamsters bite me. Anyways. I used to have hanster, ha- hamsters. <laughs> I had hamsters. They fit my hand. On that note, thank you so much for joining us. Be sure to check us out on Facebook, Spotify, what? Facebook and Instagram uh, to see what's going on with the podcast. I yep. post there not as much as I should. Um, thank you for, you know, the people that continue to support us. We uh, like you. We, we like the all 10 of you. Yep. And uh, be sure to check us out on Spotify, iTunes, Google Play, and Podbean. And we 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 do this on YouTube every other week. Yes. And we, we record it. So if you have any back rounds you want us to do uh messages on facebook instagram or email us at morning at gmail.com if you want to be on the podcast or have a topic you want us to cover you can message us that way and uh, uh yeah give us some topics yeah we always find it entertaining when people are like hey talk about this because it hasn't happened yet it hasn't <laughs> happened yet so interact we with find us. everything entertaining we want you to interact it'll be fun people we're not begging much eventually Anyways, thank you so much for joining us. Have a wonderful morning, noon, or night. Ciao. That was awkward. You didn't say the thing. I know. (laughs) (laughs) See ya.